welcome to our whole school assembly. Given that this is my first whole school assembly, I was very much looking forward to speaking to you all here in the sports hall, but unfortunately that's not to be. I have tried to recreate this by introducing today's assembly from this familiar spot. I'm sure you're all slightly more comfortable than you would be sitting here on the sports hall floor. Today's theme is embracing challenge. And as we come to the end of this half term, which has been packed full of new challenges for us all, I want you to reflect on the challenges that you have faced and what have you done to overcome these challenges. To embrace means to accept willingly and enthusiastically. How many of you take this approach when faced with a challenging situation? If you're someone who actively avoids challenges, I hope this information in the Assembly will encourage you to change your approach to certain situations. Today we're going to celebrate some individuals who have embraced and overcome different challenges, look into the personal benefits of challenging yourself regularly, and finish with some top tips when you're faced with a challenging situation. I hope you're all looking forward to a well-earned break, and I hope you enjoy today's Assembly. What challenges have you faced in this first half term? The enormous scale of the current pandemic is a challenge for us all. I've put some examples of challenges you have faced on the screen. I want you to stop and think about some of the other things you've found challenging this half term. This might be at home or in school. And I want you to think about with your classmates what you've done to overcome these challenges. We're now going to move on to the Duke of Edinburgh Award and recognise the students who have recently, recently completed their bronze, silver or gold award. Before we do this, I want to show you a short clip which will explain to those of you who don't already know exactly what the Duke of Edinburgh Award is all about. DOV is exciting. Excellent. Hard work. Doing your DOV is definitely a lot of fun and it gives you a chance to get outside your comfort zone and try something new. There are three DOV levels. Bronze, which takes around six months to complete. Silver, which I'm currently doing, which takes six to 12 months. And gold, which takes between 12 and 18 months. To achieve a bronze or silver award, you need to complete four different but equally important sections. Volunteering, physical, skills and also an expedition. If you're going to go for gold, you'll also have to complete a residential. <laughs> With the DUV, I'm always having fun, I'm always being excited, I'm always doing what I've always wanted to do, which is be physical. You should see my CV, it's amazing. I mean, the things that I've done. Just, you, you get given so many opportunities and you'd be stupid not to take them. Making new friends and uh, helping other people out. That's the main reward for me. The friends you get, the confidence you build, just the experience you have, which you may never have um, again. But just to have that one time is amazing. Although it was a really, really big challenge, it was probably the best thing I've ever done. The Duke of Edinburgh's Award is useful, inspiring, it's amazingly fun. <laughs> Fantastic. Adventurous. If someone's thinking of doing a DOE, I would advise them to stop thinking and just start doing it. I hope you enjoyed that short video and I hope it encourages some of you to get involved in the Duke of Edinburgh if you haven't already done so. The following students achieved their bronze award. Kieran Abel, Patrick Acharya, Toby Acharya, Dominic Ambler, Lucas Bauchier, Lawrence Bowes, Ben Bracey, Charles Dobby, Ed Epps, Niall Gill, Frankie Harrison, James Hutchins, Lewis James, Rupert Lambert Tor, Jacob Lamarckund, Daniel Lightfoot, Daniel McVeigh, Kieran Merrigan, Benedict O'Connell, Finn Orman, Rufus Sadler, Sam Schotter, Ben Stroud, Noah Struthers, Billy True, and Billy Wilkinson. Moving on to the Silver Award, the following students have achieved this Silver Award. Nathan Burge, Joshua Dibb, Ed Fox, Lewis James, Sam O'Connell, Byron Perry, Logan Roster, Sasha Sappleking tambling William Storr, and Nathan Trend. And finally, a huge congratulations to those of you who've achieved your Gold Award Isabel Ambler, 
Juliet Baron Robinson, Finn Coleman, Katie Gaston, Molly Gath, Ross Harvey, Isaac Lee, Freya Jones, Jack Lancashire, Joshua Moyes, Victoria Salter, and Ruby Westhead. Your tutors should have your badges and your certificates. Again, a huge congratulations to everybody involved. Before we move on, I would like to celebrate two students of the week. Both of these students have certainly embraced the challenge of returning to school and are this week's and last week's student of the week for the following reasons. First up is Frank Poynton Duke for being extremely helpful in supporting Mrs. Armstrong with the PTFA. He is always helpful, polite and reliable. This week's Student of the Week is Tark a Little for his tremendous effort and focus at Get Egg Club. Congratulations to you both. Your tutor will have your certificate and gift voucher. I now want to share with you six reasons why you should embrace challenges. We often think about challenges as what we're going to achieve once they're complete. Something that I found really useful is thinking less about the final outcome of a challenging situation and more about the benefits that we can see by just attempting and embracing our new challenges. The first reason I want to share with you is to identify strengths. Working through challenging obstacles will push you to discover strengths you never knew you had and reveal qualities within yourself that would otherwise have been undiscovered. Identifying these strengths will fill your toolbox with skills to conquer greater challenges in the future. Recently, we were forced into a challenge of remote learning, which forced all of us to work in a way that we weren't used to. This certainly helped us to discover some strengths in you, and I hope you're able to recognise some of your own strengths and qualities. This may have also highlighted areas of weakness that you now know need to be developed. Next, we have resilience. Putting in the time to work through challenge will cultivate resilience. The conquering of one obstacle builds confidence that you can handle something even tougher in the future. The more you embrace challenges, the higher your threshold will become for what makes you uncomfortable. Over time, you'll improve your ability to bounce back from challenging situations. Resilience is something that we've all had to demonstrate in 2020. I think it's fair to say that everyone in the DHSB community has done themselves proud. The third reason for embracing challenge is to master our emotions. When pushing through a challenging time, you'll experience a wider range of emotions, whether it's sadness, frustration, anger, desperation, or more positive emotions, contentment, bliss, or relief. Feeling, learning, recognising and sorting out how to deal with these emotions will lead to a mastery of your emotional self. No longer will you be ruled by emotions, instead you will be the master of them. Ask yourself whether or not you've mastered your emotions. If not, actively searching for challenging situations can be extremely beneficial. Next up we have social growth. During challenging times you will reach out to others and seek insight and wisdom to help you overcome adversity. The people you discover will become mentors, inspiration and support. Relationships forged while going through challenges are some of the strongest bonds people can share. Can you think of relationships that have grown stronger due to a shared experience of challenging situations? Next up, we have cultivating leadership. I believe leadership is a real strength for students at DHSB and something you should all be extremely proud of. Overcoming adversity makes leaders of us all. Others struggling in the same or similar way will look up to you as an encouraging example. Your triumphs become a model for others to follow, or at the very least, be an inspiration. The best leaders are the ones who lead by example and have overcome many challenges to become the person they are. Finally, and arguably the most important reason to embrace challenges is to develop and build character. The obstacles we overcome in life and the decisions we make when faced with them shape who we are. The results of these trials provide a bearing towards the person we will become. In the same way, going to the gym exercises our body and builds muscles. Taking on challenges strengthens our character and leads us on a path to being the best version of ourselves. Next time you are faced with a challenging situation, try to think less about the outcomes and more about how you develop and grow through those challenges and experiences. You will usually find that by doing this, it takes the pressure off and you're likely to see more positive results. We're now going to have some music from the native. For those of you who don't know who they are, they're made up of five young men, four of whom are previous students at DHSB. They all left us with fantastic A-levels and put their university place on hold to embrace on a huge challenge of being successful in the music industry. Their new single is called Breakaway, which fits extremely well with today's theme. The single is about not falling below the surface and being in control of your own fate. 
Like everyone, the recent pandemic has hit the boys extremely hard and has had an impact on the progress they were making. Some of you would have seen this poster on the screen. It was released by the government last week. And as you listen to this single, I want you to think about the poster, which suggests that people who work in the arts should consider retraining in order to take a different career path. enjoyed that as much as I did. I'm now going to ask your tutor to pause the video to give you a chance to discuss the poster on the screen. Do you agree or disagree with the poster and are you able to justify your opinion? Up next I want to focus on this inspirational individual. Ibrahim Amato is an Egyptian Paralympic athlete who tragically lost both arms as a result of a train accident when he was 10. Ibrahim loved playing table tennis and was adamant that his life-changing accident wouldn't stop him. He had to be extremely resilient to find a way to continue not only playing, but being successful in the sport that he loved. When you're watching this video, I want you to think not only about the physical challenges that Ibrahim had to overcome, but the social and emotional challenge of performing after such a serious accident. I started playing tennis after the accident for three years. I started to play the mother under my arm and failed. After that, I tried to play the mother under my arm and I started to play the game. After the accident for three years, in 1986. أحسن حاجة حققتها في 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 حياتي كلها عامة الجواز. في في مجال التنس طاولة كل ماتش أنا بكسبه بحس إن أنا يعني بحقق وإن شاء الله أنا أنا جوايا أمل إن شاء الله أنا أفضل من كده وأحسن من كده إن شاء الله ومفيش حاجة اسمها مستحيل يعني بتمنى إن أنا أكون في يوم من الأيام بطل العالم في الكلاس بتاعي. لما 
نتيجة دعوة بصفة شخصية من الاتحاد وطبعا على رأسهم الأستاذ آدهم شرارة والاتحاد الإفريقي للبشمهندس خالد صالحي ده ده أعظم تكريم بالنسبة لي أنا كده يعني قمة السعادة وحاسس إن أنا فعلا يعني بستمتع بتنس الطاولة مع أبطال العالم تنس الطاولة في مصر مميزاته ان اللعيبة نفسها بتحب اللعبة وفي مستويات طبعا جامدة جدا جدا وبدليل ان احنا ربنا كرمنا وخدنا ميدالية برونزية في, في الاولمبياد الكابتن سامي حي Uh, he play really, really good. I can't believe he play with the uh, mouse. I'm really happy. I mean, to meet Ibrahim and uh, to play against him, it was fantastic. What an incredibly inspirational man! He certainly proves absolutely anything is possible when you put your mind to it. To finish this assembly, I want to share with you ten top tips to overcome challenges. The first is to accept your emotions. Realize it is okay to feel pain. Let yourself be sad, angry, or any other emotion. Feeling your emotions is as healthy as it is important. Bottling these feelings up will do you harm in the long term and prevent you from making progress. When in a challenging situation, it's important to make a plan. In order to overcome any challenges you may face, you'll need to make a plan. Figure out what it is you need to do and put this plan into action. Know and understand that others struggle too. So often in life we focus on our own challenges, but remember you aren't as alone as you may feel. Reach out and ask for help. Asking for help isn't failing, but failing to ask for help when you need it is. Don't be afraid to reach out for support. You'll find people who are more than willing to help. Accept the support of others. Asking for help can be hard and accepting it even harder. It's so important that you accept support from others around you. Focus on helping others. Look for someone to help. You may be surprised by how much this helps you. Enjoy the small things in life. It's really important not to take things too seriously and always remember to smile. Never be ashamed of finding things difficult or even failing. The important thing is that you learn every opportunity. Be proud of everything you've achieved and look forward to a bright and successful future. And finally, celebrate all the good things in life. There may be bad, but you can always find the good. Focusing on those things and you'll be happy you did. That brings us to the end of today's assembly, which I hope you've all enjoyed. There's just one day to go until half term, and I hope you all enjoy a well-earned rest. Please stay safe, and I look forward to seeing you all after the half term. So the first notice is something that lots of you have been waiting for, and that's the start of inter-house football. This will start on Friday the 6th of November, which is the first Friday after half term, and they will run every single night from 3.30 until 4.30. The games will be played on the AstroTurf, and it will be six aside with a maximum of 10 players in each squad. The games will be 12 minutes each way, and they will start with year 11 on Monday the 9th of November with Mr Bunny and Mr Carpenter. Year 8 will be on a Tuesday with Mr Bunny and Mr Strang, starting on the 10th of November. Year 10s will be with Mr Orkney and Mr Strang, um, starting on the 11th of November. Year 9 on the Thursday evening, starting on the 12th of November with Mr Carpenter and Mr Orkney. And Year 7s with myself and Mr Orkney will be on a Friday. Um, but this will start on the first Friday back after half term on the 6th of November. And that's to ensure we get all the games played this side of Christmas. Please remember that you must wear full DHSB PE kit, including shin pads, um, to play in the game. Um, you must also wear footwear appropriate for the AstroTurf. If you are not wearing correct PE kit, if you're not wearing shin pads, um, you will not be able to play in the game. So please make sure you're prepared and come to school in your DHSB kit in order to be involved in inter-house football. Please note that games may be cancelled or reduced in, um, in, in, in bad weather. 
And we're also looking for three referees to officiate each evening. Um, volunteers, please email Mr Orkney, um, but you must be in the same year group in order to referee. Hello everyone and welcome to the Fancy Premier League update for this assembly. Uh, I'm pleased to say that we have 135 people who have joined the DHSB League and that includes 18 members of staff. Both those numbers are the highest that we've ever had. However, the deadline date for payment is tomorrow and not everyone is paid. So please pay your £2 as soon as possible. Otherwise, you will be suspended from the league from Thursday onwards. As for the league standings, well, Sasha from year 13 is in the lead with a really good game week that he had this week. And he's followed closely by Mr Nab, who's also doing really well. As for the staff league, um, you can see the top 12 there, which is being led by Mr Nab, closely followed by Mr Manley and Mr Anderson. I haven't had such a great start myself, but I'm happy to be in the top 10 anyway. And then we've got some of the, the staff that are near the bottom. Uh, Mr McLeod only joined in this game week, so that's not a bad score for only one game week. And there's a long, long way to go. So good luck to all. The next message is for those of you that cycle into school. And it's a reminder that you should not be riding your bike on school site. As you get in in the mornings, please dismount and push your bike to your bike lockers. And when you leave in the afternoon, please make sure you push your bike to the school gates and only mount your bike when it's safe to do so. This is a really important message and really important that you all follow these instructions. We've had a few very near misses this year. So please remember, for those of you who are cycling, there is absolutely no cycling on the school site. My final message is a huge thank you to everyone who's involved in the Young Minds Hello Yellow Mufti Day. As a school, we managed to raise over £875, which will be donated to Young Minds, who are a leading charity committed to improving the emotional well-being and mental health of children and young people. Very well done to everybody involved.